Don't get me wrong. You're incapable of staying out of trouble. Just incapable of staying out of trouble. One, two, three, four, five, six, 13, seven, 14, eight, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and now case number 34. What do we need to do to get you to exercise self-control? <coughs> All right. You have a job, okay, that's why. You don't have shisa going on in your life. And as a result, you have way too much time on your hands. And so you become self-destructive. And what do you do, just smoke weed all day? Is that all you do? Really? I'm sending you for a drug test now. You wanna, you wanna bet money on it? You ready to put some money on it? Or, I'm sorry, you wanna put some jail on it? I mean, maybe putting some jail on it might help because you have 34 separate Jesus, that's wow. It doesn't surprise me when he hit his face, he was singing Brian Adams, please forgive me. Please forgive me, I know not what I do. You have a job. Forgive you, but you did destroy my family. A family destroyed and speaking up after a speeding driver killed St. Louis police officer David Lee in the line of duty. First Lord 4 investigates uncovering details about the driver who hit Officer Lee. According to court documents, Ramon Chavez Rodriguez is in the country illegally and has a criminal record. He is charged with driving while intoxicated under an enhanced law when the death of a law enforcement officer is involved. David has been a protector my whole entire life, like, it's been me and my big brother, like, I knew David was going to be a police officer when we was little. Married 19 years, Tanya Lee says she takes comfort in being by her husband's side in his last moments. What gives me total peace? is to know I held my husband's hand and prayed with him. Sunday morning, Officer David Lee responded to a single car crash on I-70 near Grand. While removing flares and cones from his car, police say a 24-year-old lost control and smashed into the officer. 24-year-old Ramon Chavez Rodriguez has been charged. He is now charged with felony DWI, speeding and driving without a license. Court records show he is currently living in the country illegally. This mugshot is from 2020 when he was charged in St. Charles County with domestic assault, DWI, and endangering a child. He pled guilty and a judge gave him probation. Maybe he lives in a sanctuary city and they don't give the information to ICE so they don't know where he is. Maybe he is from Venezuela and they can send him back because Venezuela don't accept them back. Or maybe they want to keep it on a hush-hush because maybe sooner or later he might be allowed to vote. Arizona has recently become the center of election integrity concerns. It was the most closely contested state during the 2020 presidential election, decided by a margin of less than 11,000 votes. The razor-thin margin of victory in 2020 led to intense scrutiny of election integrity measures in the state. The primary concern is that non-citizens could be registering to vote and participating in American elections. The stakes in the 2024 presidential election could not be higher. So, we went to Arizona to investigate the matter ourselves. At the Los Vecinos apartment complex in Phoenix, Arizona. Hi. Hola, señora, ¿cómo está? Uh, somos una organización. Ahorita estamos ayudando a la comunidad hispana aquí del área de Phoenix, dándoles información para la gente que igual quieren registrarse para votar aquí en las elecciones en noviembre. Uh, no más de pura curiosidad, ¿está usted uh, registrada para votar? Ya, ya nos registramos. Ah, ok. Sí. ¿La registraron aquí o en sí. el trabajo? Ah, en el vinieron? trabajo. Ah, en el, el trabajo. trabajo. Okay. ¿Usted es ciudadana? No. Usted ya lo registraron. Había una obligación que me dijo que, bueno, fue en la, en la ayuda de la, de la en la ayuda que nos dan a nosotros los, los hispanos cuando venimos aquí. Oh. Yo puse que, que sí, que llegué a votar, pero bueno, no sé si quiere registrarme ahí. Ah, o sea, usted puso que sí. Sí, yo puse que sí, me dije, pues, ahí me salió una obligación que si quería votar y yo puse que sí. ¿Y usted eh, uh, es ciudadano? No? no, estoy esperando la residencia. Lo... ¿Está esperando la residencia? Sí. Ah, ok, ok. ¿Y uh, usted uh, planea votar este año? Sí, uh, ¿Y usted, la última pregunta es, si, ¿a quién le gusta a usted ahorita? Está, eh, la Kamala y, y el Trump. Y el Trump. No, sí. la Kamala. La Kamala. ¿Usted dónde nació? En Cuba. ¿En Cuba? Sí. Ah, ok, ok. And I found it very weird. I thought Cubans hated communism. But wait, they actually do. They don't want to get deported back. Por favor, ¿está usted registrado para votar? 
Creo que ya me registré la semana pasada. Ah, ya se registró. Sí. Oh, okay. Ah, ok. Ah, ok. ¿Usted está registrado para, para votar? Sí. ¿Sí? Ok. Uh, ¿Lo registraron aquí o en su trabajo? En el trabajo. Ah, en el trabajo. Uh, ¿Usted es ciudadano? No. ¿No? ¿No es ciudadano? No. Ok. Uh, nomás de pura uh, curiosidad, ¿usted está registrado para votar? Sí, ya llenaron eso. Ah, ¿ya? Sí. Ah, ok. La, ¿Vinieron aquí sí, alguien sí. para registrarla? Ajá. Uh, pero sí, de, 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 de curiosidad, ¿usted es eh, ciudadano americano? No. ¿No? Todavía no. Venimos con una organización que ayuda a la gente a registrar para poder votar en las elecciones. ¡Oh, ya pasaron! ¿Ya? Ya, ya. ¿Ya está registrado? Ya. Oiga, ¿usted es ciudadano o no es? No, no, no. Aquí no hay ningún ciudadano. Oh, ok. Oiga, pero eh, este año la camala y el trompudo, ¿usted quién le gusta? El trompas dice que el primer día va a empezar a sacar gente. Usted tuviera que votar por alguien, ¿por qué no? El trompas es negociante, ¿ok? La Kamala Harry no es negociante, pero la Kamala Harry creo que está con la comunidad, pero pues va a seguir igual, la gasolina va a llegar más cara, todo el dinero lo toma tanto para las guerras. ¿Usted votara por Kamala? Pues sí. Pero usted lo que hizo lo bueno de Kamala es que está con la gente. It is what it is. However, the mainstream media continues to minimize the issue. The Washington Post said that the issue of non-citizens voting was dishonest. Rolling Stone claimed that the issue was non-existent, and NPR assured its audience that the issue is a myth. And now I have shown you three sources that you can't really trust anymore unless you do your own investigation to be sure. I think it's existential in this moment that people of our political persuasion find a way to crack the code to pull people out of these fringe ideologies and back into normalcy. So I'm curious as to just in the broad strokes, you touched on this a little bit, but how do you feel like we can get better at doing that? Um, just in the broad strokes, like anything that you found that just works or doesn't work? Treat conservatives like they deserve to be treated. Treat them like children. When they, when they say stupid shit, they need to be called out and held to account for these things, and they can't be allowed to walk out. You shouldn't, you, there's just, there is no reasonable conversation to have with a conservative who won't live in reality, and people shouldn't pretend to do that anymore. Find other people to, to bring on and have the conversation with. Um, it's just ridiculous. And then if that fails and we, you know, we end up splitting, I think I'm also in favor of, I'd vote yes on this. Let's split the country in two, and we'll go 20 years. Okay, all the MAGA dipshits can go to one side, and all the other people can go to the other side, and we'll see in 20 years where we're at, and then whoever's doing better. Um, you get to rule the other country and the other side loses the ability to vote for a generation. Fuck you. Um, and we'll just do that. We'll see how when you have people like Alex Jones as the head of your fucking science department, when people like Joe Rogan are the heads of your media and cultural centers, um, when your, uh, you know, your Giuliani's and your Sidney Powell's are the heads of your Department of Justice, we'll see what you guys can do. We'll see what you accomplish. We'll see what you get done. And, you know, if your country sucks shit in 20 years, um, if you end up being a massive fucking drain like all the red states are and the blue states are right now economically, yeah, if you end up being that, then in 20 years you just lose your right to have a fucking say in things. And you just sit down and shut the fuck up and let everybody else try to move the country forward. Because right now it's like trying to drive the fuck Titanic with, with seven boat anchors. I mean, that would be amazing, right? Let the right-leaning people stay right. Let the left-leaning people stay left for 20 freaking years. And no left-leaning people is allowed to move to right-leaning places like usually it happens because for some taxes or crime or other reason. Deal? We lead the nation in DWI fatalities in this county. It's freaking disgusting. It's sick when all you have to do is take a damn Uber. Literally, how much money have you given Mr. Legrand? How much money have you paid through all the bullshit that you've done this entire 591 days that you've been with us? How much money have you paid when literally a $20 button is all you need to push wherever you want to go? Don't come back because if you do, I'm going to light you up so on everything that's holy. You know, the problem I have, Mr. Thomas, is that when we're too nice to people, you know what they do? They take advantage of us. You know, that's, I'm telling you, it's the problem. When we're too nice to people and when we don't give them a hard time, it's they run all over us. It's like, it's like little children. Anybody that thinks that tomorrow is just going to be better is still a child because only a child can be that positive. What's the first word that pops into your head when you hear the name Kamala Harris? Liar. That's an adult. It'd be good for us to have um, a black woman as president for the first time in history. Yeah. But um, my vote's kind of still on Trump. That's another adult. I understand her. I agree with her. It would be cool to see our first president with one eye. 
but I still would vote on Trump. Your policies are anti-black. This is not a black thing. This is a you thing. You are a disgrace for all black people in this city. Woo! All right, why were you taking a machete to a bar? I didn't have no machete, man. No, the police report no. says that you I were in to... possession of a machete. They're not saying you used it. Oh, no, I didn't have machete. I went to the hospital that day on May 19th. I got locked up. No, it says additionally victims stated that during that incident, you were also in possession of a machete, and then they asked you to leave because the bar was closing, and then you started pouring gasoline on the patio, threatening to burn the bar down, and then you ended up hitting the complainant with a pool stick, and then said that you're going to go back to the complainant's residence and burn the house down, oh, and then the police found you at the complainant's residence. I was, they were renting, they were renting a room for me. I was at home when I got beat up. I, that same night I got locked up. I went to the hospital. Oh, I got well, up. here's the thing. Are you saying that none of this is true? Because if it's not, if you want a jury trial, we'll do no, That's true. All right, man. All right. All so right. why are you pretending like it's not true? I think he was deflecting so much, he thought he became Kamala Harris. A Sydney daycare center has banned the birthday uh. cake, instead offering kids a wooden cake on their big day. Mmm, tasty, yeah. right? There it is right there. And this is happening apparently right across the country with other daycare centres offering celebratory certificates, a birthday badge, even a birthday hat instead of a cake. It's becoming more and more common, but is it political correctness gone mad? I mean, what, is it even political correctness? It's just mad. I can understand the empathy, but I'm like, what if my kid accidentally say, well, later I'm going to eat real cake? Go directly to jail. I mean, if they can cancel a real cake, they can cancel your freedom of speech. What the heck, man? No, there's no sorries here. Guess what happens now? Did he really test positive for alcohol? A point, a point oh five? Guess what happens now? When did he test? You drinking now? It's no, I haven't drank. You just flew positive, man. I understand that, sir. I slipped. I apologize. He goes with you. Uh-uh. You drinking at nine in the morning, man? What the what the flip? I have not drink this morning. You just blew. Hmm? Judge, we can't do uh give him credit for the time that uh, he's, he's going to get credit now, but I mean, no, he's, for the, for, uh, he's been coming uh, twice a week to court, testing everything. Yasha, he's blowing a point oh five at nine in the morning. Either he's drinking like a fish all night to where he, he's coming down to a point oh five, or he's drinking right now. So if he's that drunk because he drank so much the previous day and he came like that, I don't know. <laughs> That's wild. Don't get me wrong, my boss a guitar bong. Put the fire na mi blonde, push hash purple skunk, creo yo colombici jam jam, dur lo que ta verde ta welcome.